Uh, what's good, y'all? I'm sitting here in traffic, so I figure I'll go ahead and do a real hot take on this uh, subject real quick about uh, Terrence Crawford. Uh, this is, he's not getting up gym boxing talk. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share. Feel free to share. Uh, I figure I'd just touch on this topic real quick. Basically, uh, Terrence Crawford is has put in has set up a lawsuit against uh, Bob Arum, saying that um, he's basically racially biased towards uh, black fighters and towards himself, obviously, and that his contracts have been kind of fucked with, basically, over the last few years that he's been signed to top rank. Um, quick, I'm gonna just be quick with this one. I don't understand the motive behind this whole situation with Terrence Crawford. I don't understand what his his uh, what he 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 feels he's going to gain out of this coming from somebody who has signed multiple times, at least twice, with top rank under Bob Arum. It just doesn't make sense. You're telling us basically that the man, Bob Arum himself, who has been around, man just turned uh, what, 80 years old, something like that. He's this is 80 or 90, I think it was 80. He just, he, he, he's been in the, in the boxing, you know, world for years and years. He's seen generations of boxing. He's helped generations of boxing. He's promoted black, white, Latinos, you know, Asian, everybody. He's 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 made a lot of boxers that we still look up to till this day, you know, here and gone, who they are. He gave so many people of different colors of races, nationalities, or whatever, a chance to be great. And my whole thing is, that's exactly what he did with Terrence Crawford. He gave Terrence Crawford a chance to be great. Now, Bob Arum can only do that. He gave you a chance to be great. He gave him a chance to be great. He gave him a chance to make money. Now, I don't see how a racist man is going to continue to work with Terrence Crawford along with other black athletes, fighters, but he could be racist. And now, excuse, I'm like I said, I'm in traffic right now. It's an accident on this uh, 94 on the 805 North out here in San Diego. So hopefully uh, I ain't catching too much of the uh, noise outside the vehicle. But uh, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. So basically down to the point, you're going to tell me that a man, you're, you're the, basically, since Pacquiao, the highest paid welterweight boxer in boxing right now, making four to six million dollars a fight within your last few fights. Two, four, six million dollars. Bob Rome is paying you this much money and losing money, apparently. Losing money after paying you this kind of money because you're not bringing any of that money back due to the fact that you're not Due to the fact that you're not a pay-per-view star the fact that people aren't you know, you know Clinging on to you as a boxer. You're not you're you're a beast in the ring But your personality doesn't sell And you're trying to blame Bob for not promoting you or treating you a black fighter not as well as he treats white fighters and latino fighters it doesn't make sense you are a three division champion you're a two-time lineal champion you're a one-time undisputed champion i believe you're a two-time unified champion also i mean that which included that undisputed championship that you gained at 140 pounds so you got all that going for you, but your problem is for yourself is you don't open your mouth. Pause. You don't you don't say enough. You don't do enough. You're not in the media. You're not being taking interviews. You're not doing interviews. You're not making yourself known. That's been your problem. It's not you in the ring, but it's you outside the ring. Bob Arum can't control 
the fact that you can't sell yourself because as a fighter you have to sell yourself you got to show people that you're confident you got to show people that you are the man floyd mayweather made himself who he is not only by being a master fighter a master boxer in the ring but also being very vocal and very present outside of the ring making sure he's everywhere that he needs to be making sure wherever he is he's behind the mic or in front of a camera he's making himself that's one thing about floyd mayweather that people love and hate but that's what sells when people love you people either love you or hate you but if you get either or then you're selling they say if you're not hated then you're not doing enough if you don't have hate then you're not doing enough and that's facts and that's what made Floyd Mayweather such a sell because he had just as many people that love him, just as many people that hate him. Yeah, on each side, people wanted to see, people paid to see him win because he run his mouth so fucking much, and people paid to see him lose because he run his mouth so fucking much. He 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 made himself. He let it be known that can, your favorite boxer can't beat me. I don't give a fuck what you talk about. Your favorite boxer can't beat me, and that's just facts. He made that clear outside of the ring. And guess what? When he got in the ring, he showed it. And that's how Mayweather, a black boxer, became one of the most, literally one of the richest athletes of all time. Been number one in Forbes how many years in a row or whatever? Because not only is he a beast inside the ring, he's a nut outside the ring stays on look at him now retired and he's still one of the most relevant if not the most relevant boxer today and he's retired he's not even active he's doing ex he's getting he's getting so much attention for exhibition fights you know but it's because he keeps running his mouth it's because he makes sure he stays relevant even if it's with the dumbest shit even if he gotta bring up canelo <laughs> which is a whole nother story is bullshit but guess what people still talking about him you gotta have a certain kind of demeanor when you're you're out there you gotta present yourself in a certain way people ain't gonna just it's not like back in the days when all you had to do is be that fighter and everything else uh two hands reaper gang said it on his 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 thing he said it's not like back in the days when people were looking for boxing where boxing was like, it was still a lot, such a life to boxing that people were still, it was like taking, it was, it was in, boxing was in control of countries, you know, fights, the biggest fights were being, being, being taking place everywhere because people wanted the shit. Nowadays, it's just a bunch of, people don't want to pay for the shit because they don't feel like it's, it's shit to pay for. Crawford, you're not a sale because people don't feel like you're worth it. You're not entertaining. You're entertaining in the ring, but that's it. But that's not enough to gravitate people towards you, to pull people in. That's not enough. You got you to gotta do more outside the ring. But it, all in all, it's just interesting the way that you're trying to use Bob Arum, the man that you signed with for years, re-signed with again. And you're trying to tell, you're trying to make people believe that he's racist after you Finished your contract with him, your final contract with him, and became a free agent. Now, all of a sudden, years and years later, now you're claiming he's a, he's racist or he's biased towards blacks and more, he favors whites and Latinos more. Now, all of a sudden, after all these years of the success that you was able to gain and becoming the most paid or one of the highest paid welterweights in the division, now, all of a sudden, there's a problem. It don't make sense, man. You're going to have to come with more in that courtroom if this goes through. Because right now, I'm, uh, they haven't hit the courts yet. It's going to take a while. But you're going to have to come with more than that. You know, you already got people like George Foreman coming back at you. Talk about it. That doesn't make sense. George Foreman, he's, he's on Bob Arum's side. I don't blame him. Because George Foreman, huge name. That boy got his own grill. Thanks, Bob Arum. You know? <laughs> You know, you got Muhammad Ali's family coming at you talking about, hey, he, he, he's the reason Muhammad Ali was basically who he was. He's part of the reason, the big part. You know, Mayweather, at times in Mayweather's life when he needed Bob Arum financially, Bob Arum showed up. 
ain't no racist man gonna show up for you if they they see you in trouble and they don't like you they racist towards you they don't feel like you worth it or they they just have that hate because racism is about hate about hating something different <laughs> if bob Aaron was racist and he hated hated uh floyd mayweather he sure showed it in a funny way by supporting him when he needed him you know it's not a good look I always support I always support Terrence Crawford as a fighter because I still believe he is the best right now. I think he will go down as one of the best in history. But this really doesn't have much to do with you in the ring. It's more so about you outside the ring and your actions as far as the way that you are presenting this new another evil to the sport of boxing, which like like we really need that. I'm not even going to bring up your issues with Earl Spence and Al and, you know, uh, PBC and all that shit. Because right now, you're putting yourself in a position where you might have no choice but to go and work with PBC. To get the same motherfuckers you was trying to avoid for all these years, you might not have no choice but to work with them. Because I'm sure Eddie Hearn don't want to deal with nobody, uh, uh, you know, who's, who's putting racism on a, a legend of a promoter. Eddie Hearn, he, he just got into the game. He a young, a young man, young, white, successful man. <laughs> he probably looking like, well, I guess even if we had something for him, we ain't going to have nothing for him now because I ain't about to be dealing with no no bullshit like that. I know I ain't racist. I got Danny, Danny Jacobs. I got Tevin Farmers. I got, you know what I'm saying? I got, <laughs> I'm running the business here. All that other fuckery, I'm not dealing with. You know, I'm sure Eddie... Eddie Hearn saying some shit like that. A lot of other guys, a lot of other promoters and all that probably looking at this situation like, yeah, we, there was a point where we actually would have fucked with Terrence Crawford, but now <laughs> he didn't, he didn't, uh, it, well, once he decides to open his mouth about saying it, it is not what we want to hear, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, end of the day, Terrence Crawford, you're going to have to, uh, whatever you got going on. I hope, I hope this whole little, uh, situation, this case doesn't even go through. I hope it falls through and it is no longer existent. They just put it behind them and hopefully move on. I mean, Terrence Crawford is at the tail end of his career. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have much left to prove. If he retired today, he would go down as one of the, one of the greats, you know, he has the accolades to be known as one of the greats in boxing history. He's done something that most people will only dream about hundreds and thousands of boxers will only dream about he's done and that's something he will go down in history for and hopefully this doesn't tarnish this won't tarnish his career as a boxer but as a a man on his own two feet hopefully either he comes with more to this that makes sense and makes it make sense or he just leaves this bullshit alone throw it away sweep it under the rug move on finish your career off retire be happy with your family be happy with your money invest in new boxers so we know he has some new some new talent under him uh, i'm not sure if he has a promotional company or not but if that's that would be a great move if he hasn't already started one and pursue that pursue other things in boxing there's so much you can do after retiring retiring and taking yourself out the ring there's still much you can do especially with a name like his he can be something extreme to boxing without even have to having to step into the ring to lace up those gloves you know so i say just figure it out dude i support you but i can only support so much when it comes to these politics and racism and all that stuff i have a whole i'm a whole different beast when it comes to it it's not the kind of beast that's gonna just be sitting here supporting because i'm black or i'm anything i don't just do hey i'm black so it's right because they said it's right no nah, it gotta make sense anything in life has to make sense everything in life has to make sense and that's why I'm, that's where i'm at with the shit so again this is uh He's not getting up, Jim. Boxing talk. Another quick little episode, and uh, I will do my best to keep everything, you know, keep you guys up to date with what's going on. If you're not following yourself, go look it up. Terrence Crawford and his uh, case against Bob Arum. Look it up. It's all over the place right now. It's all over boxing Facebook groups and uh, Twitters and everywhere. So it's not hard to miss. All right. So, uh, anyways, everybody, be good. I'm still in this traffic. I might be in 
in traffic for another 30, 45 minutes from where it looked like. I'm just going to get some food. This is crazy. So, anyways, but I'm stuck. Ain't no exits or nothing. So, it is what it is. All right, y'all. Be easy. Peace.